Greetings, everybody. This is a short introduction to uh, Jeremiah 31. I want you to realize something. At least this is my theory. I think the Gentiles of the New Testament are divorced Israel of the Old Testament. Jeremiah 3.8. So I spent over an hour showing you what happens in the Old Testament and then listening to the same exact language in the New Testament. So I hope you'll keep that in mind when you listen to this study and uh, see if you agree. Is it possible that the Gentiles of the New Testament are the divorced children of Israel of the Old Testament? I think it's very, very, very possible. So, all right, here comes, this is just the introduction. Thank you. Keep listening. Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible and turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. This is one of the most important books in the Bible, if you ask, well, chapters, one of the most important chapters in the Bible, if you ask me. After all, this is where the Bible talks about the new covenant that would come in the future. It's not a renewed covenant, no. It's a new covenant. I'm going to try to keep this under an hour, but I'm not promising anything. I could make a two or three hour study out of this one chapter easily. Now, if you're interested on the YouTube channel for as long as it's up, I have a playlist and the covenants of Abraham is very useful. You only have I known a series of three Bible studies, a lot of the same information. And, uh, you know, that's, you can find uh, more in-depth studies on this stuff. So, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 31, verse 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, Will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people? Thus saith the Lord, The people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. You know, there's grace. I, I, I've had people tell me, oh, well, the, the Old Testament's nothing but law and judgment and wrath. There's no grace in the Old Testament. Well, right here in Jeremiah 31, grace. Genesis 6, it says, And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And people say, oh, there's no grace in the Old Testament. Well, that's because you're ignorant and you don't know anything and you're not looking. I find grace in the Old Testament. Verse 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Do you know the Bible's a love story? It is. Of the Lord and his bride, Israel. And then there's people who try to tell you that Israel and the church is two different things. I'm sorry, the Lord only has one bride. You're either in Christ or you're not. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built. 
O virgin of Israel, thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall eat them as common things. Now remember, Samaria was the capital of northern Israel. Judah's capital was Jerusalem. In the days of Solomon's son, they split. Just like, I guess you could say, the north and the south in the American Civil War. Verse 6. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim... Uh, Ephraim was the major tribe in northern Israel, whereas Judah was the major tribe in Jerusalem. Remember, there were 12 tribes. And anybody tells you, oh, all 12 tribes are Jews, uh, you should run away and not go to that church and stay home and read your Bible. I guarantee you, you'll learn a lot more. I guarantee it. Because they're either ignorant or deceivers or both. Verse 6. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. For thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Remnant. Remnant is not everybody. A remnant is like what's left over. Verse 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country. Ah, what, what country is, what, what's north of Israel? Well, if you get a map and you look at Israel and you go straight north, guess what? You see Europe. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them that the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water, waters in a straight way. Wherefore, they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Does this sound like uh, what happened in 1948 with that little state over in the Middle East? No. No. There's people that want you to think that this prophecy has been fulfilled. Did the Lord lead them to the land, or did the United Nations, which is Antichrist, lead them to the land? Hmm. Think about that. Uh, ask that in your Bible study. And uh, when next time you go to a 501c3 IRS-approved state-chartered business called a church, well, with the name church in the name, you know, First Baptist Church or whatever, and uh, watch them explain it away. And if you keep pressing, well, you'll be told to leave. Yeah. And if you don't leave, you'll be arrested for trespassing. Oh, wait. That's right. The churches are closed, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can't have those churches open with, uh, yeah, the, uh, the V thing. The beer. Yeah. That Mexican beer? Yeah. Verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations. Do you know that word nations there is the same word as Gentiles? Yeah. 
It's the same word. Sometimes they used Gentiles, sometimes they used nations. I don't know why they did that, but I am not saying it's a mistranslation. No, I'm just pointing it out so that when you see the word nations or you see the word Gentiles, you recognize it's the same word and just understand the context that it's being used in. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off. What isles are afar off? And declare it in the isles afar off and say, He that scattereth Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. Well, guess what Greece is? It's a nation of isles, islands. What is England? The isles are far off. What about Iceland? Greenland? Think about it. He that scattereth Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. Didn't Jesus say he was the good shepherd? Oh yeah, many times. Verse 11. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Who was stronger than Jacob? Uh, the devil? Yeah. Yeah. The devil had the power of uh, death and was locking them up in prison. Oh boy, that's an, that's an excellent Bible study. That's why Christ died, to redeem his people from the power of death and hell. But I can't get into that. That would be, I've already done that as a Bible study. And if you're interested, I'll, you know, send me a message or comment or something and I'll, uh, I'll show you. Remember when Jesus said that uh, the sign of the prophet Jonas, you know, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth? Where do you think Jesus went for the three days and three nights before his resurrection? He went to hell. Abraham's bosom to preach the gospel to the Old Testament saints. Jesus went to hell, Chaplain Bob? That's crazy. No, it's not. No, it's not. If you don't even know what Abraham's bosom was and the rich man and Lazarus, uh, maybe you should, uh, instead of going to church, maybe stay home and read the Bible to the family. Turn off your TV. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know why I bought my first TV? Because my neighbor had lost his job and he was going to move back to Pennsylvania to be with his family. And he was like, Bob, uh, I need money to go back home. He says, can I sell you my TV for 50 bucks? I, I remember that. I was like, man, I felt bad for the guy. So I gave him 50 bucks, you know. I mean, I would have given him 50 bucks without the TV, but, you know. I think that was in the a late, yeah, that was in the late 80s. Never owned a TV. Didn't want to have one. Had a nice stereo. Real nice. Over a thousand bucks back then. Yeah, I could have bought a used car for what that stereo cost. But I don't even listen to that much anymore. Hardly ever. Verse 11. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the power of him that was stronger than he. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil. You know, wheat, wine, and oil. Very symbolic. Remember the parable of the wheat and the tares? 
God's people are called wheat. Jesus said he was the bread of life. And what was wine? At the Last Supper, Jesus said that uh, wine was, uh, you know, this is the blood of my new covenant. And what about oil? Oil. They anointed the kings. The oil was representative of the Holy Spirit. What did they use to burn in the lamps? Oil, olive oil. You know, you could take olive oil and stick it in a tray and take a piece of string, soak it in the oil, and you can light it and it'll burn. Yeah, it gives light. Jesus is the light of the world. And the Holy Spirit guides you into that truth. I mean, come on, people. I mean, it's amazing when you start doing word associations. It's just... Whew. And then people say, ah, well, you know, the Bible is just written by men. Yeah, men that were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So let's read, let's start over with verse 12 here. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For wheat, and for wine, and for oil, and for the young of the flock, and of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. That sounds like the kingdom. Doesn't the Bible say that Jesus, uh, God will wipe away all tears? Oh, yeah. Verse 13. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together, for I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priests with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. When did that happen? Oh, let's take a look. All right, keep that in mind. Rachel weeping for her children. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, now Herod, that whole family, Herod, was bad. Bad figs, evil figs. Those of you that have been following this whole series, you'll know what I'm talking about. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. From what I understand, these people were from Parthia, which is around modern-day um, Iran. P-A-R-T-H-I-A. -A. They were an empire, contemporaries with Rome, and about equal in power with Rome. Rome and Parthia had wars. Rome won some battles, but they never won the war. Something hidden in our history books. Many things are hidden in our history books. Parthia was a major, major power, and Rome could not conquer them. I don't think just the three wise men were alone. I think they had an army with them. That's what I think. Because why would Herod be troubled with three guys? He probably had more than three guys on the right side of his throne guarding him. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. 
When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. See, Parthia used to go to Jerusalem. Parthians would go to Jerusalem to worship at certain times of the year, uh, during the feasts. And Rome pretty much left them alone, because they didn't want to have a war against Parthia. I mean, Parthia had kicked their rear ends a few times. And of course, Rome uh, had done some, well, they Parthia knew they could never trust Rome. Rome uh, pretended to be nice, and then they uh, did sneak attacks and stuff. You know, they were talking peace, and then they would do war. So Parthia learned that the Romans were a bunch of dishonorable devils. And after they had done that, Parthia always uh, paid attention to what was going on. So, if, uh, if you were a Star Trekker, the Romans would have been like the Romulans. There you go. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Oh yeah, we got a new king in town. He's going to get, you know, you're going to be out of here, Herod. And when he, Herod, had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And I if memory serves me correctly, it's in Micah. Verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Liar. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Now remember, in Revelation 22, Jesus is called the bright morning star. But if you look at the uh, Messianic Complete Jewish Bible, or the NIV, in Isaiah 14, the guy that fell from heaven, they call him the morning star. Thus, they equate Jesus, who they call Yeshua, into being the morning star who fell from heaven. They delete the word Lucifer and insert the word morning star, thus making Jesus into Yeshua, Yeshua the morning star, who fell from heaven in Isaiah 14. Oh yeah. Makes you want to go join a messianic congregation, doesn't it? Not... But the NIV does the same thing. Thank you, Gail Ripplinger, for pointing that out to me. I find it disgusting. And if you like James White, he defends that. I prayed for James White to die. And so far, the Lord has not answered my prayer. Guy's a heretic. Yeah, people, you know, Christians go, oh, well, James White debates with the Muslims. You know, the Muslims say that the Bible's mistranslated, but then James White agrees with them. Yeah, well, yeah, it's mistranslated, but we know where the mistranslations are. We corrected them. What? When you start agreeing with Muslims about the Bible being wrong, maybe you're a heretic and not a Christian, especially when you say that... Uh, 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 the morning star, which Jesus calls himself, is a proper translation of the word Lucifer that fell from heaven. 
And guess what? The largest printer of Bibles in the English-speaking world prints the NIV that, that says that. Believe it or not. Of course, their parent company prints the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan and gay porn. Yeah. And guess what? They got a TV channel. It's called Fox. That is how bad things are. The apostasy is hidden in plain sight, people. Parthia was just as powerful as Rome, perhaps even a little bit more so. And yet you've never heard of them. I took history in college and I never heard of the Parthian Empire. I mean, I, yeah, I went to Bible college, but I went to what is now Palm Beach State College. Never heard of it. Never heard of the Parthian Empire until probably a year or two ago. Well, if you look for it, you can find it, but uh, why is that? Verse 10. When they, the, the wise men, saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child and Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented, presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Oh, yeah, Herod, really nice guy, huh? You know, Herod's descendant was on the throne of Galilee when Pontius Pilate was getting ready to pronounce sentence upon Christ. Christ was brought to Pilate by the you-know-whos. Pilate said, oh, you're from Galilee. Okay, so they sent him up to Herod. And Herod was examining Christ. And you know what Christ said to Herod? Nothing. Not a word. You would think, oh, Chaplain Bob, God loves everybody and he wants everybody to be saved. Oh, really? Why didn't Jesus tell Herod to repent? He didn't say anything to him. Nothing. Not a word. Of course, this is not the Herod. This is not the Herod that in the days of Christ. This is a, uh, I think, a father or grandfather. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Get out of Dodge. Verse 15. And was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. So, Christ came out of Egypt, and in the days of Moses, Israel came out of Egypt, right? Verse 16, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth. He was angry and sent forth and slew. He murdered and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Can you imagine that? Killing all the, the young boys well, it says all the children. I guess, I guess it doesn't say boys, does it? 
It says children. I guess that's the girls too. From two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men, then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy, Jeremiah, Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Rama was there heard, well, I'm sorry, in Rama was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted and would not be comforted because they were not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of of Israel. Hmm. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah 31, verse 15. Thus saith the Lord, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Wow. You know, I hear so-called pastors and preachers saying, oh, you know, we're New Testament Christians. Uh, don't read that Old Testament. You know, that's for the you-know-whos. That's not for us. But the, the Old Testament is full of prophecies that are fulfilled in the New Testament. But the reason they don't want you to read the Old Testament is because It'll show you that they're, they're liars and their doctrines are all messed up and nothing makes sense if you listen to their interpretations. And when you start asking questions that they can't really answer because they're lying to you, it makes a problem for them. So don't read the Old Testament. That's what they'll tell you. That's for the you-know-whos. Verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that my, thy children shall come again to their own border. You know, people, there's a... Uh, I did an entire Bible study on it, but... The uh, Jesus said that in the resurrection there would be no marriage in heaven. We would be like the angels in heaven. But yet the Bible records that there will be children in the kingdom. Uh, the, the, the child will play at the hole of the, uh, the asp or the cockatrice, the dangerous viper snake thing, serpent. And uh, the lion will lay down with the wolf, and they're going to the lion's going to eat grass. Now there's a group of people called preterists that teach that everything in Matthew 24 was fulfilled back in 70 A.D. Uh, so what they have to do is they have to ignore the Book of Revelation. They they got to ignore that. Or spiritualize the whole thing away. But then it talks about, you know, the lions eating grass like the ox. Uh, have you seen that? Well, last time I turned on National Geographic and it showed uh, big cats, lions, uh, they were still eating animals. So that hasn't happened yet. So people that tell you that everything in Matthew 24, called preterists, are idiots. I mean, I'll admit, a lot of Matthew 24 was fulfilled. But all of Revelation has not been fulfilled. Not yet. I mean, they want you to believe that this is God's kingdom right now. All this evil in this world is God's kingdom, according the gospel according to the preterists. All right. But my point is, there's going to be no marriage in heaven. So where do these little children come from? 
that are laying down with the lions or whatever, you know, playing with the dangerous serpents and not being hurt. Well, what about all these women that had their children murdered by Herod? Don't those children get a chance to grow up? I think so. Absolutely. I did a Bible study on that if anybody's interested in more, you know, detail. I mean, I could spend five or six hours doing a Bible study and all this stuff, but I've already done a lot of it, so, you know. All right, verse 17. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. May, and I'm sure the children that were murdered will have a chance to grow up in the Lord's kingdom and what is the purpose of a thousand years that Satan is bound? Satan's locked up for a thousand years. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. What's the purpose of that? God's going to test all those people that have died below a certain age. I suspect 20 years old is that certain age because a male could not join, a male could not be drafted into the army until they were 20. according to God's law. And God always follows his law. Verse 18. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised. You know what chastising is? Getting whipped. As a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke, turn thou me, and I shall be turned. For thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented. I repented, and after that I was instructed. I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Boy, I can relate to that. In my youth, I did so much stupid stuff. I'm surprised the Lord didn't just kill me out of hand. I'm glad he's a gracious and merciful Lord because I'd have been in trouble. Verse 20, is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Uh, Ephraim did a lot of bad stuff, but the Lord says, I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Set thee up way marks. Make thee high heaps. Set thine heart toward the highway, even the way which thou wentest. Turn again, O virgin of Israel. Turn again to these thy cities. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Well, guess what? Every time a woman bears a son, a woman compass a man. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. Well, that's future because that's not now. You think Jerusalem right now is the habitation of justice and a mountain of holiness? I don't think so. And there shall dwell in Judah itself and in all the cities thereof together husbandmen and they that go forth with flocks. For I have satiated the weary soul and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Satiate is a verb, transitive. It's from Latin. It means to fill, to satisfy 
appetite or desire to feed to the full to furnish enjoyment to the extent of desire uh, to be full so yeah like in a desert when it has a heavy rainfall lots of water so you know to be full like thanksgiving dinner you were hungry thanksgiving dinner well there you go verse 25 for i have satiated the weary soul and have replenished every sorrowful soul verse 26 upon this i awaked and behold and my sleep was sweet unto me behold the days come saith the lord that i will sow the house of israel and the house of judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast is that a four-legged beast or is that a two-legged beast do you know that sometimes angels are called uh, there's at least one angel that is called a beast yeah it had four faces so beast isn't necessarily a derogatory word it's just a description verse 28 and it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict so will I watch over them to build and to plant saith the Lord in those days they shall say no more the fathers have eaten a sour grape what happens when you eat a sour grape uh, you know you got a belly ache and you got a frown on your face right in those days they shall say no more the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge but everyone shall die for his own iniquity every man that eateth the sour grape his teeth shall be set on edge oh boy here we go verse 31 all right this is the whole reason i'm reading this entire chapter verse 31 jeremiah 31 31 behold the days come saith the lord that i will make a new n-e-w new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah Ooh, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Who broke the covenant? They did. Israel broke the covenant. And then you listen to people like John Hagee that says, well, you know, the you know who's have got an unconditional covenant with the father uh no they don't they broke the covenant they broke the covenant a covenant is like a contract i have an old used car and you want to buy it and two thousand bucks and i say it's two thousand dollars cash and you say well i don't have two thousand dollars okay what do you got well i got a thousand how about I give you half down and give you 250 a week for the next four weeks? Fine. So you give me a thousand bucks, you give me $250 for four weeks, car's yours. You know, you give me 50% down, I hold it for you. I don't sell it. Well, guess what? If you give me half down and you don't pay me again, guess what? The car is not yours. You broke the contract. You know, and that's how it works. 
God said, keep my commandments. Well, they didn't do it. Israel and Judah did not keep the covenant. They broke the covenant. And it says, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. You know God's going to forget the sin? Oh yeah. All right, let's take a look. Why the new covenant? Now, if you want to, you can read Jeremiah chapter 3. I'm just going to read an excerpt from it. It talks about all the sins that Israel committed and how God was disgusted with them. And I don't blame him. Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, spiritual adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. You'll never hear that taught at John Hagee's church. God divorced Israel. Divorced her. Gave her a bill of divorce. Put her away. Get out of my house. I'm sick and tired of you. Playing the whore. That's the Bob translation. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks, idols. Yet, verse 10. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. So Judah was pretending was going through the motions of worshiping the Lord, but it was a feign, feigned. Uh, guys, you know how it is in football? They feign that they're doing a, a, a running play, but then the quarterback pretends to hand off the, the ball to the running back and he runs, and, but his hands are, his arms are empty. And the quarterback goes, steps back, and throws a pass. That's a feign. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. Yeah, she was pretending. Judah was pretending to worship the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, the backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. God divorced Israel, but yet she was more righteous than her treacherous sister Judah. Verse 12. 
Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors, you know, like ministers and preachers, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Wow. We could keep reading this. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. Is Jerusalem right now the throne of the Lord? No. No. If anything, it's the throne of the devil. Think about it. Is the Lord ruling from Jerusalem right now? No. And if you think he is, you, you must have a different Christ. I don't know. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. That doesn't sound like today, does it? No. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. Two different houses. And they shall come together out of the land of the north, out of the land of the north, what's north of Israel? Europe. To the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your father. Fathers. But I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. There's only one holy father, and it's not the Pope in Rome. Sorry. No, I'm not. Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. That sounds like modern-day America, and the United Kingdom, and the European Union. Verse 22. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel, for shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us, for we have sinned, for we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Oof. Let's take a look at Hosea chapter 1. I might even have to make this a part 2. Uh, well, we're getting close. Book of Hosea. You know, the book... 
Book of Hosea is a love story of a man and his adulterous wife. And guess what? It's like the Lord in Israel. Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. You see, kings of Judah, king of Israel. They're not the same. They had different kings. Where do preachers get off saying, oh, Israel and Jew, same thing? No, they're not. God divorced Israel. Bring that up the next time they say that uh, Israel and Judah are the same. Say, well, God divorced Israel. Jeremiah 3.8. Watch them have a heart attack. They go, oh. They'll tell you to leave. Uh, what was that scene where... Uh, and they live where the guy had the glasses on in the store. And he told that woman, oh, she, you're ugly. And she talks into her watch and she says, I got one that's got eyes. Or I can, can see. Yeah. Yeah, the spiritual blinders were taken off. Boy, I'll tell you what, they live... There's a lot of spiritual, uh, yeah. I I never watched that until somebody recommended that to me. You know, I don't watch movies and TV much, hardly ever. But when I do, it's just to uh, see where they're hurting us. But uh, yeah, that movie, boy, I'll tell you what, that's, oof. yeah, they live, we die. They were turning our planet into their planet, poisoning us. John Carpenter. Oh, yeah. So, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take thee a wife of whoredoms, and children of whoredoms. For the land hath create, uh, committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel, upon the house of Jehu, and I will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Well, guess what happened? Assyria came and took Israel all away. And they took part of Judah, too. They tried to take Jerusalem, but they couldn't do it. The Lord, angel of the Lord came and killed 185,000 troops that had uh, Jerusalem surrounded. Verse 5. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Loruhama, for I will no more have mercy, I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. I'm not going to have mercy on Israel anymore. I'm going to take them out of here. They're going into captivity. Verse 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. So, God divorced Israel, but not Judah. God sent Israel into captivity. Think about it. Verse 8. Now when she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said, then said God, 
call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Ooh. I mean, is that some harsh stuff? For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Now remember something. God told Abraham to look to the sky and count the stars if you can. Now, I mean, I'm really paraphrasing. And he said his children would be like the stars in the sky and, and like the grains of sand on the seashore. And if you can count them, so would your descendants be. So does a few million you-know-who's over in the Middle East, does that fulfill the prophecy? I think not. Yet the number of the children of Israel, Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. And where was that? In Jerusalem. That in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of of the living God. So in the place where they said, you're not my people, there it's going to be said, ye are the sons of the living God. When did this come about? Ah, the new covenant people. Remember, they didn't keep the old covenant. They broke it. God divorced them. But in Jeremiah 31, 31, he says he would make a new covenant. Don't listen to those Hebrew root heretics that'll tell you, oh, no, 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 it's a renewed, renewed covenant. No, it's a new covenant. The blood of Christ is a new covenant. Not a rebuild the temple and animal sacrifice and blood and guts all over the place. No, 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 no. Jesus said, it is finished. but not to the Hebrew roots people. They want to go back to the renewed covenant. Yeah, the first covenant didn't work so well, but we're going to try it again. We're going to renew that old covenant that didn't work the first time. No, no, no. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, Christ, and they shall come up out of, out of the land, and great shall be the day of Jezreel. Now, I believe that has reference to uh, the Battle of Armageddon and what have you. I, I think it's tied into that, but I'm not 100%. Let's read verse, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 2, Hosea. Say ye unto your brethren, Am I, and to your sisters, Ruma, plead with your mother. Plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her, adulter and her adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her as a dry land and slay her with thirst. And I will not, and I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother hath played the harlot. Oh, this is Israel, right? For their mother hath played the harlot. She that conceived them hath done shamefully. For she said, 
I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. Yeah, they worshipped uh, the devils and Satan. And they attributed everything, all the good things that they got to the devil. Verse 6. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy ways with thorns and make a wall, and she shall not find her paths. And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but she uh, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. B-A-A-L. Basically Satanism. Verse 9. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof, and my wine in the season thereof, and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. Uh, physical nakedness or her spiritual nakedness? What does Christ give those that at the marriage supper of the Lamb? White raiment washed in the blood of the Lamb, right? Right. Verse 10. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lo lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. Oh yeah. When the Lord starts to spank you, don't expect Satan to come and rescue you, because he can't. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees. Now remember, vines was a representative of Israel, fig trees of Judah. But I mean, this is probably talking about food also, but uh, it's got a spiritual application. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, wherein she hath said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me. And I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, wherein she burned incense to them. She burned incense to the devils, not the Lord. And she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, and forgot me, saith the Lord. Oh, yeah. Has anything changed in the last few thousand years? No. No, hasn't. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall come and it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai and shalt call me no more Baali. Now, Baal means Lord. It's just a generic word for Lord. I mean, Satanists and Luciferians could call Lucifer and Satan Lord, or Baal, but it became so associated with Satanism that the Lord said, don't call me that anymore. Call me Ishai. Verse 17. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. All right, verse 18. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and will make them to lie down safely. Well, that's got to be the kingdom, because there's never been a day with, without war since the creation of the earth, probably, that I know of. Except for maybe in Genesis, I don't know. Verse 19, And I will betroth thee unto me forever. 
What does betrothed mean? It's a promise of marriage. I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness. God's going to betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her, that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. Wow. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. Hmm. All right, let's go read Apostle Paul, Romans chapter 9, verse 22. Now remember, he's talking to the people of Rome. Verse 22, Romans 9, 22. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that, he, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Verse 25. As he saith also in Osi. That's the Greek rendering of the word Hosea. We just read Hosea. As he saith also in Osi. I will call them my people, which were not my people. And her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Esaias also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. This is the same exact language that we read in the Old Testament, people. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go back to Jeremiah 31. 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Now remember, in Isaiah 31 it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. In Hebrews 8.8, 8, By finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Hebrews 8.13, In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old, not renewed, old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth, waxeth away, a waxeth old, 
is ready to vanish away. It's got to vanish away. The old covenant's got to vanish away, not be renewed like those Hebrew root heretics. No, don't listen to them. They don't, they don't like Paul because Paul shreds their doctrines, to sh tears them to shreds. Hebrews 12, 24, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. You want to bring animals to the new temple for the you-know-whos to redo their animal sacrifice? That's up to you. I'd rather put my faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. But hey, that's just me. What do I know? Now, the difference between a covenant and a testament, a covenant is like a contract. It's, you know, a promise. But a testament, have you ever heard of a last will and testament? Well, a last will and testament doesn't come into effect until the person that makes it is dead. Well, what happened to Christ? He died on the cross. At least his body did. Let's go to Matthew 26 and verse 26. Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. For this is the blood of my New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The marriage supper of the Lamb. So, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Verse 32, Jeremiah 31, 32. Now, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. They broke the covenant. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days saith the Lord, that I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. So as long as there's a sun in the sky and the moon and the stars at night, keep that in mind, verse 36, if those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall uh, also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So as long as there's a sun in the sky and a moon at night, there's going to be the seed of Israel in the earth. Verse 37. Thus saith the Lord, If heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel, for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord from the tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner, and the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill Gerub, and shall compass about to Goath. And the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields from the brook of Kidron unto the corner of the horse gate toward the east shall be holy unto the Lord. 
and it shall not be plucked up nor thrown down any more forever. Why is that? Well, guess what? There's going to be a new heavens and a new earth and a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. And all those dead bodies and ashes and everything else will pass away. But that's for another Bible study. A new heavens and a new earth. And all the wicked will be burned up and destroyed. Praise the Lord. But for right now, we got to put up with all the evil ones. Not an evil, not an easy thing to do, putting up with all the evil in this world. So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.